Hello everyone, and welcome to my young and restless gossip channel. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. Lily under pressure, Faith's moral dilemma, Lucy's boozy move, and Sharon's danger therein. Sharon Newman continues to have hallucinations in tomorrow's episode, and she finds herself in danger. Faith Newman faces significant issues as a result of Lucy Romilotti's drinking. Lily Winters is also facing pressure. Discover what will happen in the upcoming episode of the CBS soap opera by continuing to read. Tuesday, August 6th, YNR spoilers show that Victor and Nikki Newman are still planning to take over Chancellor Industries hostily. Sean Dominic's character Nate Hastings is hinted to be drawn into the takeover drama. But Lily is the one with the greatest amount of pressure. Victor is going to make Lily feel uncomfortable with Billy Abbott, Jason Thompson. Lily will most likely have some reason to suspect Billy, thanks to Victor. Since Lily is somewhat familiar with Billy, she might see that Victor has some valid concerns regarding Billy's dependability. According to spoilers for Tuesday, August SIXS episode of The Young and the Restless, Sharon will keep having hallucinations of Cameron Kirsten, Lyndon Ashby. Case stated that Sharon and Cameron's adventure is only beginning in an interview with Soap Opera Digest. Then, in a different interview, Ashby said that Cameron was going to attempt to persuade Sharon to take certain actions against her better judgment. That seems both fascinating and disturbing, especially in light of Cameron's past. Sharon may be in serious danger if she travels to Arizona by herself for this retreat and she continues to have hallucinations of Cameron. Lucy bragged to Daniel at Crimson Lights about how her new swimsuit would slay at the pool party that evening. While Faith and her pals were out and about, Lucy was determined to seem cool, even though Daniel wasn't sure that was something a father would want to see. Daniel could tell his daughter was thrilled, but he wanted to have a conversation with her before she left to enjoy herself. He revealed that he worried they would offend Heather by refusing to travel to Portugal, so he wanted to do something special for her mother. Although Lucy conceded that they ought to do something pleasant, she insisted that it couldn't happen that evening because the pool party was everything. Lucy bustled across the coffee shop to find out when the party was going to start after she saw Faith and another girl walk in. After Faith introduced her to Miriam, Lucy asked if Miriam would be attending the pool party that evening. Faith and Miriam glanced at each other as Lucy energetically barraged them with questions about coordinating their plans. Lucy was told by Faith, with regret, that she was worried it wouldn't work out. Knowing there would be booze and a stringent headcount regulation, Faith was sorry that Lucy couldn't make it to the party. Lucy noted that Faith was not a drinker, but Faith emphasized that the audience would likely be older. Lucy, who was obviously dissatisfied, turned to leave and decided to come along the following time. Faith complained that it had been unpleasant to have to do that to which Miriam said, that was extra. When Lucy came back to Daniel's table, he inquired as to how things were going. The party was on, Lucy said, and she was looking forward to it. Phyllis was happy to see Heather at society. When Phyllis asked if Heather and Daniel had packed for their Portugal trip, Heather replied that it had been rescheduled. Phyllis questioned Daniel's lack of communication to which Heather replied that they had only lately determined it was not a good time to go. It was excellent since, as Phyllis pointed out, they were both unemployed. Heather put the heat to blame, but Phyllis suspected a romantic relationship between Heather and Daniel. Heather countered that weather-related cancellations of excursions were common, and she thought it strange that Phyllis had assumed Heather and Daniel were experiencing issues. Though Heather surmised that Phyllis was using it as an opportunity to delve more into their private life, she reassured Phyllis that everything was well at home. Heather had a feeling that Phyllis would have preferred to hear the other response. Phyllis vowed that she sincerely hoped the couple's relationship would succeed. Phyllis should take the win and quit interfering in their relationship, Heather said. Concerning the last time Daniel had lost everything and descended into darkness, Phyllis expressed her worries. Heather acknowledged that she had first been concerned as well, but Daniel had changed since then and was responding to the situation with courage and resolve. Heather was sure Daniel wouldn't crumble under that pressure. If it happened again, would Heather leave Daniel, Phyllis wondered. 
Heather remembered that while she hadn't given up on Daniel at the first show of weakness in Savannah, her attempts to support him had also failed. Heather vowed that she had only left for Lucy's benefit and had lasted as long as she could, up until the moment at which she broke. Phyllis sneered at the idea that Lucy had suggested they travel to Portugal. Heather argued that she hadn't wanted her daughter to witness Daniel's further decline because she'd seen what it had done to Lucy. Since Daniel had tried to keep things to himself and had already entered a very dark place when Heather learned how awful things had gotten, she acknowledged that she hadn't initially seen the difference in him. Heather insisted that she had discovered what the signs meant, despite Phyllis's concerns that she might overlook them once more. Heather was positive Daniel was not going down that road again, but she'd know the moment he did. Phyllis questioned how Heather could be certain that Daniel was not the same man he had been previously, to which Heather responded once more. How can you not be? Heather answered back. Phyllis should have greater faith in Heather and her kid, Heather advised her. He wondered what was going on when he saw Daniel and Lucy approaching. With a false smile, Phyllis said that she and Heather had been discussing their future employment opportunities. Lucy saw it as a sign to head outside and get ready for the pool party. Lucy received lectures from Daniel and Heather about abstaining from alcohol and other drugs, even if she observed her friends using them. Lucy could manage herself, so she told them to stop being those parents. Daniel clarified that he was only watching to make sure Lucy didn't mix too much with the older set, but Lucy felt that they ought to be pleased that she was meeting new people, such as Faith. Although they wanted Lucy to exercise caution, Heather argued that they were happy. When Lucy was ready for Daniel to come get her, he told her to give him a call. Lucy left the restaurant, pausing briefly to regain her calm before continuing. Daniel made fun of Phyllis for her inability to resist interfering. According to Heather, Phyllis was concerned that Heather would leave Daniel as soon as he became upset at the loss of Omega Sphere. Phyllis explained that she had only expressed concern about Daniel's resilience following the loss of all he had worked so hard to acquire. Daniel made a vow to never crumble or jeopardize his family's safety once more. Heather promised to support Daniel no matter where his path led, and he looked forward to starting something entirely new. Daniel asked Phyllis to simply let them to go about their lives. As Nikki walked inside the athletic club, she ran into Jack. He informed her that he was going to give her a call to check on her. She verified that everything was going well with her outpatient treatment, assuming he was talking about it. As long as Victor met her there, Jack offered to buy her a cup of coffee. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.